Mr. Winger, I think it's important to tell you that I sent a link to your Benny Hinn video to my estranged family, upon which I received this. Benny Hinn is one of the most influential preachers to have ever lived. On the 1st of April, 2024, well-known Christian content creator Mike Winger released a four-hour video entitled The Victims of Benny Hinn, 30 Years of Spiritual Deception. Due to my past and watching Mike's video, it was highly apparent that I had some very relevant skin in the game. Before addressing that, however, I do encourage you to go and watch that video for yourself. He's known for his miracles, supposedly healing Evander Holyfield, of his heart condition, right? That's the boxer who Mike Tyson bit his ear off. He is repairing Holyfield's heart. Slaying people in the spirit. He's well known for this, very well known for this. He's also known and calls himself an apostle and an evangelist saying he's led many, many, many people to Christ. But I've looked into him and I think he's a very bad man. I'm not exaggerating. I think he's a very, very bad man. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the evidence that makes me think that he's a bad man. What I'm about to show you, I think, in a just world, would land him in prison. Please hear me out now, especially if you're a Benny Hinn supporter. I'm not attacking you, this video's for you. What do I therefore have to offer, not only as a response to Mr. Winger's video, but as a contribution to the conversation as a whole? Because I was saved into the Word of Faith movement at the Brownsville Revival under Dr. Michael Brown, John Kilpatrick, and Steve Hill. He's in a hurry. He he wants he wants he wants everyone. He, there's not much not much more time. And he he aches and he, he grieves for your spirit. He grieves for you. <laughs> And yet, I am still a victim of Benny Hinn's ministry. Why? Because not only were his teachings influential over me for over two decades, but the absolute closest family member I had was saved at a Benny Hinn crusade in Orlando, Florida. And now that entire side of the family not only continues to adhere to his teachings and his ministry, but those family members, who are pastors by the way, no longer talk to me, and this is specifically due to their deception under the teachings of individuals like Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, and so on. Because of people like Hinn, 50% of my family mocks the disabled for their unbelief. They believe I am deceived by the devil or have called me Satan directly. They throw my past sin in my face and to this day lead many people to a false Christ. Because of people like Hinn, my family no longer talks to me specifically due to their beliefs and their deceitful desires to never have them tested, reasoned, or questioned. Today, I'm gonna to show you a ton of video footage that I think shows Benny Hinn's false prophecies, not just in the past, but very recent false prophecies, provably false, horrible lies, him manipulating people, physically hurting people in ways that will curl your toes. I would call it assault personally how his slain in the spirit stuff actually works, at least my opinion on that, and more. From the 1990s up until last week, there are victims of Benny Hinn, and I dedicate this video to those victims. This is for the victims of Benny Hinn, it's about the victims of Benny Hinn, and I want there to be less victims of Benny Hinn. So I attended a Benny Hinn crusade in Orlando, Florida with one of these family members. I can tell you that Benny Hinn is every bit as energetic and ecstatic as he appears on camera. Now during the service, Benny Hinn had asked that only the children of pastors were to line up in front of the stage so that he could pray for them one by one, therefore asked them to make a large line. I'm not entirely sure how he figured this out, but somehow he had surmised that individuals who were not the children of pastors were beginning beginning to set up in this line, upon which I witnessed Benny Hinn become very belligerent and screaming at his bodyguards, I'm assuming because he was annoyed by the people lining up who were not the children of pastors. Sadly, this man does not exemplify the gifts of the Spirit such as self-control and peace that we see outlined in Galatians 5. In this portion of Mike's video, he addresses Benny Hinn and his association with the prosperity gospel and his supposed repentance from preaching it. We're also gonna answer the question, did Benny Hinn repent? Because a lot of people think he did. In 2019, there's this viral content of him seemingly very genuinely repenting of these past issues with his ministry. I think it's an offense to the Lord. It's an offense 
to say, give a thousand dollars. But he did not repent. That was not true. And I'm going to share footage that I think proves that that's the case, that he did not repent. Again, I advise you to watch Mike's video, but it is highly apparent, even just using Mike's evidence, that Benny Hinn's repentance is not a genuine one. Even when being interviewed by Michael Culianos, his son-in-law, at the Jesus Image School, Benny Hinn shifts the blame of him preaching the prosperity gospel to anyone but himself. It started uh, during the Crusades, and uh, not much in OCC. OCC was very normal, just you take the tithe and you're done, you know, tithe offerings. Um, but the whole mentality uh, of the subject came up maybe late 1999, somewhere there, early 2000, when I would be invited to telephones. And to my shock, uh, they would tell me that I raised more money than anyone. But, but he, was, he was troubled by my, at that time, my understanding, maybe I would say, and stand on prosperity. Um, but I didn't really do anything about it. Because my, the, the, the people around me were very strong pro-message. And that went on for a while. This man will happily lead millions into poverty via the prosperity gospel and blame other people for him teaching it, even though by his own words he said he didn't want to, and yet he still teaches it today. So this video is dedicated to those victims, especially those victims who are still currently believing in and supporting and giving their money to and trusting Benny Hinn. The man is a major problem, no solid Christian should have any respect for him in any regard. There is a reason that Costi Hinn, Benny Hinn's nephew, left the ministry and now points out the massive dangers in it. There is a reason that Mike Winger makes the occasional videos like this one. There is a reason that half of my family has nothing to do with me. We must not give the benefit of the doubt to someone just because they profess Jesus, because, as in Hinn's case, it is a very different Jesus from the Jesus of the Bible. And Galatians 1.8 is very clear about this. But if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. So your affection, if you're a follower of Benny Hinn, your affection for Jesus has been redirected from Jesus to Benny Hinn. I 100% agree. What many who haven't been in a Hinn-based type Christianity won't realize is that the followers learn to be defensive of Benny Hinn with a very aggressive sense of vitriol based heavily on cognitive dissonance. Hinn's followers learn to defend Benny Hinn from Benny Hinn. Somebody's attacking me because of something I'm teaching. Let me tell you something, brother. You watch it. Dear God in heaven, I wish I can just... Oof. They call out the ministry in my foot. You know, I've looked for one verse in the Bible. I just can't seem to find it. One verse that said, if you don't like him, kill him. I really wish I could find it. <laughs> but don't mention people's names on your radio program and your TV program, thinking you're doing God's service. You're not. You stink, frankly. That's the way I think about it. Sometimes I wish God would give me a Holy Ghost machine and I'll blow your head. Hinn uses biblical terms erroneously, such as touch not thine anointed, in order to deflect criticism, teaching, and exposure, when those are the very things that the Bible has called us to do. And those are the same tactics, sadly, that his followers were learned by association. Mike gives multiple examples of the little God's doctrine in his video exemplifying the beliefs of Word of Faith teachings. Let's look though and see how popular this has been and still is in Word of Faith movements, which Benny Hinn is very much part of even if he sometimes has said he's not. He was super popular in the 90s, especially, I think, to teach this word of faith statement about you being little gods. Some people still have taught it, like uh, Kenneth Copeland still teaches it, but this is that we in and of ourselves, because we are made in the image of God, are therefore little gods. This is a highly blasphemous and idolatrous doctrine and isn't biblical at all. We are made, God isn't. We sin. God doesn't. We are not little gods. As I relay in my recent video where I expound on how the word of faith broke my family, I mention how one of the family members who no longer talks to me 
absolutely adheres to the Little Gods Doctrine. So Mike is completely accurate in his video stating that this was a very popular teaching back in the 90s, but I can tell you firsthand it is alive and well in 2024. Though Mike does illustrate that Benny Hinn supposedly repented of this, I can tell you that it's definitely in my family. And remember, these family members are both pastors and they have been teaching these things for decades. Here is what Justin Peters brings out. And this made a lot of news, and uh, a lot of people were rightly accusing him of teaching heresy for this. And so he was asked about this in an interview with Charisma Magazine uh, back in 1993. So uh, let me read this to you, exactly what he said in the interview with Charisma Magazine. And this was back in, again, 1993. So he was asked about it, about his teaching a nine-member Godhead, and he had responded, quote, at one time or another, all preachers repeat something they've read, even though they didn't take time to study it carefully. That was my mistake. In Finnis Dake's book, God's Plan for Man, he teaches that each member of the Trinity has his own spirit, soul, and body. One Sunday, when I was speaking on the Trinity, I repeated that teaching. As soon as I, now watch this, as soon as I did, I could feel tension in the congregation because the people sense when you say things that aren't right, so I tried to clear the air. Jokingly, I said, there must be nine of them. Well, the people laughed and I thought, boy, that was a dumb thing to say. Then I forgot about it. God the Father, ladies and gentlemen, is a person and he is a triune being. We're watching the video to see, was he joking? Did he sense tension and then say, ha ha, I just got a joke and you know, is it that, or is it something entirely different? So I ask you, just what version of the Bible do you think that my family members use? The very same author that Benny Hinn is referencing here, the Finnish Dake's King James Bible. Finnish Jennings Dake is a prominent patriarch in the Word of Faith movement and still has his fingerprints in the theological standing of my close family member who raised me. Amongst his dubious theology, Finnis Dake transported an underage girl across three state lines and motels, called her his wife, and faced federal conviction under the Mann Act. My point being is that not only do people get drawn in by the enthusiasm and the showmanship of people like Benny Hinn, but as evidenced by my own family, people become heavily influenced as to what resources they should be using in their walk as a Christian. Someone who follows Benny Hinn is already an incredibly difficult individual to pull out of hell sending heresy, but if they are utilizing their resources, such as audio tapes, books, and so on from the likes of Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, and Jesse DePlantis, well then it gets far far more difficult to pull the wool away from their eyes because they have been indoctrinated to a false Christ on multiple fronts. Here in Mike's video he goes on to discuss the many false prophecies of Benny Hinn, which in fact points to the tolerance of false prophets and false prophecies within the Word of Faith movement. That was a false prophecy, definitely provably false. What about Fidel Castro? Remember that guy? Benny had made some statements about him. I put some information on the screen here um, so that you can see how wrong it was. The spirit tells me Fidel Castro will die in the 90s. Oh my. He died in Some will try to kill him and they will not succeed. But there will come a change in his physical health and he will not stay in power. 2008. And Cuba will be visited of God. 2008 is when Fidel Castro came, left power. Uh, 2016 is when he died. I had confronted my own family member in regards to the false prophecy from Kenneth Copeland that COVID would end in March of 2020. Obviously, COVID still hasn't ended, and the family member was far too fearful to touch God's anointed. And this is part of the rub. These false teachers instill so much fear into their congregation, and it's completely baseless. We have no reason to fear setting a default position of skepticism testing and questioning. Just because someone professes Jesus has a nice white suit or a following of some kind. It's okay to be skeptical. It's biblical to do so. And those very things are poison to people like Benny Hinn, which is why they have to instill so many fear-based tactics. So much fear, in fact, that their followers will gladly cut off connection and communication with their own family members. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in families that reach out to me. I've seen it in the documentary 
documentaries I make, and this is why in and of itself, at the very core, the Word of Faith movement is a cult. Many can be saved at the outskirts of this theology, but at its very core, it is a fear-based movement that will gladly sacrifice the loving bonds of a family in favor of a charlatan like Benny Hinn. This is why families are lost. This is why desperately sick people die because they are told if they take their medicine or they go and see a doctor, then they don't have enough faith for their healing. The list literally goes on and on and none of it is biblical. In this clip, Mike addresses how the congregations of these false teachers are not adhering to critical thinking. The fact that he didn't have like a hundred Bibles thrown at his head in this meeting is, is, is remarkable. It shows again that false teachers condition their audience to already believe whatever the next thing that guy says. There's no critical thinking process. There's no, it's no, it's just already I, I believe in, and wow, whatever he says. That's a, ver a sign that you're in a scary place is that you, you think to yourself, if this leader, if this pastor taught something false, would everyone just clap? And if your answer is yes, then you got, you got to get out of there. This is a bad situation. And I totally agree. And yes, millions and millions do sit there, nod, get along and are dragged towards hell. Whether we want to admit it or not, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Bill Johnson, Stephen Furtick, the Demon Slayers, and so on are the face of mainstream Christianity, but it is not biblical Christianity. And that's why it's so very easy for skeptics to make a mockery of Christianity, because the ones who appear on TV and have the big book deals and the huge YouTube channels and the podcasts, they are the face of Christianity, but it is not the Christianity that Christ intended. And so, yes, Mike is 100% correct in that these individuals who follow these false teachers are not practiced or taught critical thinking skills. They are not applying exegetical analysis of the word that is being used by these false teachers. And in reality, this is heartbreaking because the Christ of the Bible is so much more beautiful and amazing than anything that Benny Hinn could package and resell to his followers who not only pay spiritually but financially as well. Here we see Mr. Winger address the fake healings of Benny Hinn. And it's in fake healings because he declares standing there as some sort of spiritual channel for God's knowledge, he declares that people are healed all the time when they're not. This little boy said his damaged vision was cured. And as soon as God healed me, I could see better. Vanden Kolk is legally blind. He told me that everything was going to be fine, that my vision would be 2020, if not better. So it was just like, I'm cured. And then, like I said, a couple hours later, it was just like, now I can't see the TV. What's wrong? He abused people's faiths. Sadly, not only do false teachers instill a sense of fear into their followers to test and question their teachings, but the same is also true in regards to the miraculous. There are countless times where Hin has prophetically claimed some kind of medical marvel only to be exposed by lies. Not even just by Mike Winger, but by channels like The Holy Kool-Aid, who is a skeptic and has done an excellent job of exposing charlatan faith healers. Number two, Benny Hinn. Let's be honest, no faith healing video would be complete without Benny freaking Hinn. This filthy rich little has been playing the masses for decades. He's been investigated so many times that the real miracle is how anyone can still take him seriously. Before each show, Benny's staff go looking for the most telegenic and gullible characters. However, this behavior becomes resident in the followers of Benny Hinn and the Word of Faith movement. Amplified storytelling is par for the course in the Word of Faith movement, especially especially when associated with supposed healing and prophetic encounters. First, let's talk briefly about Benny raising the dead. Here's an interesting claim that Benny made, again, showing old lies, but I, I wanted to let it be its own separate little section. It's very brief, but there was a time when Benny claimed that there was a, a resurrection or, or someone raised from the dead at one of his meetings. Check this out. And it's a whole drama. I was in Ghana just recently. We had half a million people show up and a man was raised from the dead on the platform that's a fact people i that's a fact a man was raised from the dead on the platform we have it on video 
For three months, we persistently requested an interview with Pastor Hinn about that claim and others. But the only interview we were granted was with the executive producer of his TV show, who admits there is no videotape of a man being raised from the dead. We were repeating a story that we had heard that we did not actually have proof of. That was a mistake in in retrospect? I would say that was a mistake. My own family members claimed to have raised the dead five times, yet there is no evidence whatsoever and when I probed further into one of the instances, the man was just sick in hospital, no coma or anything, and again, no evidence to be found. And I get it, we want the miraculous, we want to see God move. What Hin is selling is a show and he's been exposed so many times. People are ensnared and entrapped in believing that if you don't have enough faith then you will not receive your healing when in reality this is just a scapegoat to remove the supposed faith healer from any blame, i.e. Benny Hinn. People are ensnared and entrapped to believe that asking for evidence or testing or questioning also exhibits a lack of faith and therefore they will not receive their miracle or their healing. Is our God so weak that his flimsy miracles are so affected by us mere mortals? In the Gospels, the Pharisees fought against the real evidence that would convert skeptics. With people like Hinn, it is the deceived that attempt to steer eyes away from the lack of evidence. So wouldn't Satan love it if Benny Hinn is what you thought Christianity really was? Yeah, I think he would love it. Because either you'd be a a misled Christian, um, a false Christian, or you'll be a non-Christian who looks at it and sees right through it. Absolutely. And from a tactical viewpoint, it's highly effective. Satan can sit idly by as deceivers such as Benny Hinn lead millions to hell on the backs of poor people, fake healings, empty promises, and a false Christ. This next section of this video is about proof that Benny Hinn is still grifting. This is proof, evidence, I think proof positive, that Benny Hinn is still grifting in that sense of preaching the same stuff that I would call prosperity gospel. In 2019, his repentance, that was just over four years ago. Well, almost almost exactly four years later, He gave the following message in October of 2023, still doing it. Tonight you're gonna give, you're gonna prove yourself faithful to God, to God. I know you paid, but your your payment was not a seed. Your seed is now. Payment for the conference. What you gave as a payment to enter into this conference was only to get a chair, not a harvest. And I'm gonna ask you to give and I will give over a thousand dollars of you have to give. What? God cannot trust you with the wealth of sinners and the abundance coming with your ten dollar donation. That's that wealth transfer. You insult him. You insult him. I am so blessed with this wonderful, wonderful community that I am a part of here on the YouTubes. This community is built up by people who have survived the likes of the Word of Faith movement, the New Apostolic Reformation, and false teachers like Benny Hinn. I can not only personally say that I and my family were taught for decades to give yourself into poverty in order to get out of poverty via the prosperity gospel, But people who reach out to me via YouTube have suffered greatly at the hands of this teaching. Mothers dying in their beds of cancer but striving to give their last dollars to Benny Hinn for their supposed healing. Married couples who are tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt because they purely use those credit cards to give to the likes of Hinn. When Mike says that Benny Hinn is evil, and may I humbly add the likes of Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, Andrew Womack, and so much more, I wholeheartedly agree. Question 10, how do we stop Benny Hinn? Final question, all that being said, what now? Um, I would say every pastor or leader or Christian who knows somebody who is influenced by Benny Hinn, please tell them, okay? This is where I could as a YouTuber, like appeal, share this video. Look, I don't care about that primarily, um, you're welcome to do that. This might be a great way to get them. But but the agenda here is just, just please 
warn them about Benny Hinn. I think Mike does a really good job of instructing pastors to warn people about Benny Hinn, but I also wanted to add a little bit of my own input as somebody who runs a discernment channel and has also felt the effects of Benny Hinn's ministries directly. Recently, there was a roundtable discussion involving Justin Peters, Jim Osman, Sam Storms, and Michael Brown. I address this because Benny Hinn was brought up multiple times as a false teacher inside of this discussion, and Michael Brown specifically refused to call Benny Hinn out as a false teacher. This is naturally a large subject, but in short, Christian leaders have no right to endorse other Christian leaders or teachers if they won't step up and have the guts to do what the Bible says to do and expose the unfruitful works of darkness, which is exactly what Benny Hinn is doing. Secondly, I believe it is imperative to dismiss this notion of having a default standing ground of theological approval. Just because someone professes Christ or is a pastor or is a well-known faith healer, no matter who, we analyze that person as we begin to watch or listen to them. And this person starts from a skeptical, and dare I say it, disqualified position. Christian leaders or teachers shouldn't just be given the green light from the onset. They need to show themselves approved. They need to show that they can rightly handle the word of God from a red light analytical position to then illustrating that they are a sound teacher and then being given the green light. No one is perfect, but obviously, and as Christ stated, there are many false prophets, many false teachers, and many false Christs. Mr. Winger, I believe your video was on point and I wanna thank you for all of the work and all of the time it took to put that together and utilizing your platform to show the dangers of Benny Hinn and his ministry. Benny Hinn does not teach a biblical Christ and is seemingly anathema. Mr. Winger, I think it's important to tell you that I sent a link to your Benny Hinn video to my estranged family upon which I received this. Sometimes the deceived want to be deceived. There are many, many people who have broken families because of charlatans like him. Therefore, it is sadly a bittersweet thing of beauty to see when sound doctrine and biblical testing is defended. Thank you so much for watching. I'm humbled by your time. God bless, mad love, and I'll see you in the next one.